that idea of giving value to people, whether they be your clients or your employees or, or some greater way in the community, it gives you tremendous success in a way that nothing yeah. else can. You're listening to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, a podcast where I have conversations with inspirational people. My name is Chris, but my family calls me Christoph. My goal is to have as many conversations as possible with people who have forged their own path by pursuing their dreams, making them a reality, all the while emitting positivity and sharing this knowledge with others. I seek these people out and share this information with you, proving to the world that you can do what makes you happy and do what you want for a living while being a good human being. We'll talk about careers, but we'll also cover any story that inspires. Let's do this while helping each other. Thanks for listening. I'm happy you're here. What's up, my friends? Welcome to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, Create Your Career. I am so excited to be here again. I said it here in the beginning of the episode, but the frequency has just, it's slowed down. And you know, quite frankly, I've missed speaking so much in these episodes. So it's been really fun to record these. And I was just so eager to learn and to speak with my guest today. My guest today was April Sprintz. She's a former Air Force vet and so much more. She's the creator of the generosity culture. And we get into what that is. We get into her military transition and this this being the 161st guest that I've had. She's taught me two things that I haven't heard in any other episode. So it was really cool to be able to learn those things. And I can't wait to be able to apply those to my life. So remember, you can find this episode and all other conversations, the contemplations and the conversations on ChristophLewis.com forward slash podcast on any of your favorite podcast app and head over to YouTube and subscribe. Sharing this with a friend would be very helpful as well. So without further ado, welcome to the Christoph Lewis podcast, create your career. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Always excited to do this. I was just telling you a little bit ago that I've cut down on the frequency of these and I have found myself really missing these. I need the time for me to think and do some other things that we're not going to get into today. However, I've missed it. So I've been really looking forward to this one more than I typically do because <laughs> I don't have them very much anymore. So before we get into the rest of the episode, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. Okay, sure. So my name is April Sprint. I am the founder of a company called Driven Outcome. And even more importantly, I am the creator of the generosity culture, which is the idea that you can have all the success in the world that you would ever want simply by investing in your employees, your clients, and your community. I really like that. And so again, to reiterate what I was telling you off camera is that one of my stipulations always, always, always to have people on here is to highlight people that are not only crushing it themselves, but to show people that it is possible to go after what you want and help other people. And that's what I'm doing. And that's what I want to show other people. And I just, it, you know, it can be tough to to only focus on yourself and, and, and not want to share your story and maybe think your story is not important. But I even love even cutting everything back to saying the generosity culture. I, I love the name and I love that you're all about giving and helping one another. So I really like also focusing on transitions, whether it be career transitions, but essentially the mindset of transition of creating something that wasn't created before. So you went out there and you are now doing this. So can you please describe to us like how you got into this creation of the generosity culture? And I, I really love that. I'd love to hear more about it. Absolutely. So interestingly, I can't take credit for it. It happened. Someone demonstrated it for me a oh, long time okay. ago. The only thing I get credit for, I think, is adopting it and then later naming it. Okay. But it, it went all the way back to when I was a little girl. I was nine years old wow. and my mother had a, was given a choice by the VP of, of Human Resources where she worked. She's basically, you have a drinking problem, you can go to rehab or you can lose your job. And that woman happened to come to our home and, and help my mom through that choice and, and help her get help and really change her life. And at the same time... Mm. She was there for this then nine-year-old little girl and said, you know, I'd, I'd like to help you. I see great things in you. I'd like to be friends. So she just generously gave of herself and invested in me wow. in a way that I had never experienced. And she shaped my worldview in the way that I wanted to be like her. Wow. So for the rest of my career, whether it was in the military, in the corporate world, et cetera, I was always wanting to be like Sue. And what I realized in hindsight is that that idea of giving value to people, whether they be your clients or your employees or, or some greater way in the community, 
it gives you tremendous success in a way that nothing yeah. else can. And so it had become my philosophy for life and then it became my philosophy of business. And yeah. that's how I'm able to accelerate companies now is to give wow. them that foundation of a generosity culture. That's incredible for so many reasons. Towards the end of the podcast, sometimes we talk about mentors and how you've acquired mentors in life, so whether it be organic or you're just like, wow, that guy or girl is doing awesome. Can you please be in my life? But it's right. really incredible hearing how this person came into your life and the life of your family and then just made such an impact that it completely changed the trajectory of your entire life to where through the military, post-military, and you said in personal and in business, it's just mm -hmm. what you do now. And I think it just speaks so, like, so as a new father, this hits me even more, you know? Like, oh, I, I really, my, my daughter's 14 months old at the time of this recording, and I just, she's watching everything I do. And I know that mm -hmm. our kids in general are just watching everything we do, the kids of the, of the world. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's watching. So it's so uh, interesting to hear that somebody had such an impact at nine and that it didn't just, it didn't just go over your head and it just, it, it continued. And it was something that you were able to learn from and implement for the rest of your life. And I think that's really powerful. And now to get, to reiterate my, one of my earlier points about helping other people, you're able to take that and it doesn't just stop there. The thought process doesn't stop there. It continues. And you like you said, again, it, it, it's your personal life and your business life. So I, I'm curious, this, this Sue sounds really awesome. Are there any other like behaviors that she taught you that were instrumental to your version of of success. Absolutely. So the great thing about Sue is she's still in my life. She has literally been a lifelong friend. Wow. She's in her late 80s now. Wow. And I call her Aunt Sue. And I was just <laughs> with her right before everything started with COVID. Mm -hmm. So I was mm -hmm. really glad I got the chance to see her. The other thing she did is when I was about 16 years old, I wanted to get experience in the office environment. So I went to that same company where my mom was still working. And I said, you know, I'd really like to, to come in and work in the office. And she said, here's what I can do. You can cover someone's vacation. I can give you two weeks to prove yourself and get other people to see what I see. The rest is up to you. So what I love there is that sense of empowerment that she gave me at a very young mm -hmm. age, which from a leadership perspective, I, she modeled that and I did it over and over again. When somebody really wanted to make something happen, I wanted to give them the opportunity to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... A lot of times, at least in my experience as a leader, that I found people that felt or had the perception of not really caring much or wanting to do much. But if you gave them a little bit of responsibility or empowerment, as you described it, they excelled quite a bit. So again, at an earlier age, 16, yeah. to learn those lessons. Wow, what great lessons in leadership. And again, incredible. Sue coming through. It's incredible from from the, your entire life to be a part of somebody's life like that and just Okay, so one of the things that I find to be part of success is consistency. So consistency mm -hmm. and mentorship, that is just so powerful and definitely uh, solidifies why you are doing what you're doing now. Incredible. So some people struggle during transitions, whether it be normal career transitions, you know, from civilian sector, from civilian job to civilian job, right. or from military transition. Obviously, I think we hear about it a little bit more, maybe because I'm former military, so my ears are a little bit keen to it. But for you personally, for your transition out of the Air Force into the civilian sector, how was it for you? And did you have any preparation or what, what are some of the, the mindset or toolings or things that were going through your head and were helpful for you? So I'm laughing because <laughs> I think the transition could have been incredible other than the way I handled it, which <laughs> hey, that's how you learn, right? Sure. So I came out of the Air Force at a time where they were doing a drawdown. So basically mm. they said, you know, you can get out at any time that you want to. And I really oh, wow. keep, I've gotten to the positions that I wanted to have and I wanted to move on and, and have bigger challenges. So when they said this to me, they gave you up to six months. You could pick your, your date to leave. And I gave them two weeks notice because that's what I'd done in the civilian world. And I'd always gotten jobs <laughs> when I was younger. So yeah. I thought it takes about two weeks to get hired somewhere, two weeks and, and I'll get out. So the transition was really interesting in the sense that I, I got out and then realized, oh, wow. And this is something that I work to help veterans with all the time. If someone reaches out to me on LinkedIn or through my website and they're a veteran, I don't care if I know you or not, I will help you because most of the time the skills don't translate mm, in the mm -hmm. civilian world. They don't understand what it is that you have to offer. Mm. So for me, 
I went and got temporary jobs. And I always, and again, this was instilled by Sue, show them what you can do and then they'll hire you. Yeah. So I went through a temporary agency and went to different companies and took a role that at the time I felt I had gone beyond, but took roles as an executive assistant, but it got me access to leadership. Wow. And I knew if I could impress them, yeah. I could get roles in the area of the company that I wanted to work in. Wow. Work. Wow. So you definitely sold yourself short initially there with the response, but you just solidified everything really well with just how cool is that to be able to step out? I mean, two weeks. Yeah, it's quick. I think especially for a military transition and you're right, it's to be expected right. in the civilian sector. But speaking as a former military guy, I know that two weeks is pretty short, but I think it's cool to go out there and kind of probe like a different positions, but be like, Hey, I can get close to these people and really show them what I'm wor worth and by working hard and, and, and doing all of that. And that's one of the things I love about what you're doing is I even wrote it down here. You said, you know, we can make your impossible possible. And I oh, yeah. love, love highlighting the people that y you may be selling yourself short. Most likely I saw it in oh, myself yeah. and, and that's what you're all about here, you know? So I I'm really, really curious about, you know, people sell themselves short, all the time in their strengths and especially underutilizing, like you said, the transfer of knowledge or skills obtained within the military and how they translate out. But how can we help change that culture of people to understand that they're more capable of, of these things that you are in pursuit of, of having these ideas to be a temp and, and work next to these people. But I want to, I want to articulate to people that they're capable of more post-military than they think they are. Oh, absolutely. So I will tell you now I've spent, almost, I don't know, over 15 years in the corporate world and okay. outside of the military. And I'll tell you that military folks have a different skill set, a different attitude and different leadership abilities than you see anywhere else in business. And because of that, they can do anything. And personally, both in my corporate career and now as I'm helping clients, I hire for attitude over skill all day long. Mm -hmm. Skills can be taught. And I think that military people are so adaptable. They're so team minded that there isn't a job out there that you can't do. And all you need to do is find a way to get in front of someone. So what mm -hmm. I always encourage them to do is look, don't go necessarily through HR. Don't rely on your resume because some of those terms just aren't going to translate mm. to a civilian. Find someone who knows you at least well enough to get you on the phone with someone mm -hmm. because that's all it takes, especially for military folks. You just have to have a conversation with them and you realize, wow, you know, yeah. this person is someone I would be honored to have on my team. Yeah, that's it's. It's funny because what I was thinking about, I was thinking about the versatility of somebody in the military and it's, you can do so many things. It's, it's on like a comedic level. I just think about when I was new in the military, when I was new in the Navy and there was literally, this is going to sound crazy to some people, but if you're in the Navy specifically, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. You've probably done this, but sweeping rain, like you, we've swept rain off of ships and, and it's just, it sounds crazy. So very, very versatile people we're talking about here. No, but I'm, I'm jokingly like you, you do a lot of things as you come up in the military and not only the job that you were given, but there's a lot of other things you do. And sometimes they're absolutely silly, but I think being able to hire over attitude over the skills is imperative because like you said, and then, and I love, and my experience, I've only been out for a year and a half, but from my experience, the hiring process has been more of hiring over skills. You know, it's much more attitude based, much more, what, what have you done in this situation or what would you do in this situation? And how do you feel about these types of things? And I, I agree. Cause you got to think about the type of people you want around you, the type of people you want working with you, the type of people that have integrity and attitude, you know, and it's hard to adjust an attitude over, Hey, this is how you do this. And, and you'll know to put in the hard work to do it. So I really love that you're doing that. And then coupled with uh, something else here that I wrote down about, you're saying like, you've talked about pivoting to continue growth. And I love mm -hmm. that because it's growth is growth is like a stock. It's not going to just go up. It's going to have its downs. It's going to have its ups. Right. And, and, and it's pivots as well. And I think it's so good to be able to, to be able to shift your trajectory. So I think if you, if I could couple one of your points with having attitude over skills with being able to pivot, I think if you have the attitude that, that growth mindset, as we hear so often now, then you're more susceptible 
to be able to pivot and continue that growth and, and work with other people like like you're saying there. And then if I can even move even forward with something else you've said is to accelerate far beyond what you thought were your limits. So all, all of these things I, I love so much individually, but they all tie together and they really are able to just help us find and help other people find what our true limits are. If, if there are, if there are even limits, you know, cause I feel as if you, once you get to a limit or you obtain a goal or you think you, you know, you learn, learn everything with this thing, there's always more to learn. So, oh, absolutely. It, it, yeah. well, I don't believe people have limits. If you can think that you can do it, if it even occurs to you as something you want to do, then it absolutely is possible. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you wouldn't have thought of it. Mm -hmm. I have never once thought I wanted to be an astronaut. So that's not in my realm of possibility yeah. because it's not in my realm of interest, mm -hmm. but anything I've wanted to do, even things that, people thought there is no way in the world you're going to be able to do that. Mm. If you can conceptualize it, you can absolutely make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've been having those conversations with myself a lot more and I, I, I'm glad you bring it up because it's something I've tried to highlight a lot as well. You know, like we've already talked about, but I just find myself, I feel as if I had vision, but then when I pulled back the layers, I was like, I don't really have a plan to achieve these, what I call goals. And they're more, of these hopes and desires and I need to be mm -hmm. able to solidify how I'm going to obtain those. So I think those are absolutely great points. So since we're talking about subscribing to the growth mindset and being able to pivot and continue growth and all of these things, do you have like a current challenge right now in your life? And, and what's your plan to get through that? If anything, I know you just recently moved and there's a lot of changes going on, but is there anything that you're, uh, transparently struggling with right now perhaps it'd be work or something personally maybe you're trying to get a better morning routine or, or something in your life and and how are you right. working through that so struggle isn't really a word that that i use very much because okay. i think even when things are challenging i i can find fun in that but i will mm. tell you that like from a speaking perspective because I, I love to do keynote speaking get the message of the generosity culture out there and the the current environment isn't conducive to really doing that mm -hmm. so First thing that I worked with some people I really know and, and trust on is, okay, how do we make this from a remote experience as lively and energetic and fun and engaging as possible? So it was literally turning a guest room into a, another studio, if you will, and setting it up so that as much as possible, you could mimic as if you were there live. Mm. And I thought it was very important. And interestingly enough, just as soon as I started doing it, I had a, a company that came to me and said, you know, I'd really like you to train my sales team. Oh, wow. I don't feel comfortable asking them to all come into the building. Like, no problem. We've got this. So in the beginning, when this first started happening, I tried to think of the things that would be impacted and mm -hmm. the ways that people are, are just going to have to pivot. You know, the digitization of work has been something that a lot of thought leaders and futurists have been talking about for years. And then overnight it was here. And all the things that they were saying, yeah. the people who were behind the power curve really had to adjust to. So yeah. for me, that was one of the things that I thought, okay, how do I get out ahead of this? How do I take this challenge and make it something interesting? And what's funny is once everything goes back to whatever our new normal is, that will be a different offering that I have that mm -hmm. might allow me to serve more people yeah. because I won't necessarily have to spend as much time on planes mm -hmm. and traveling mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I do think there's silver linings in most situations. I don't, uh -huh. I don't think it's black and white, but I have, you know, and this is only my experience and everybody's experience is vastly unique within the pandemic. Some, I, I know people are left and right saying, if you don't come out of the pandemic learning something new or new language, I like you're failing. And that's clearly not true because there's some people working more than, than ever. And then they have much less time than us. And, but I do believe that if you do have more time, and you really do want to grow, then it's a great time to grow. And it's a great time to find those silver linings and be like, Hey, like, like in your experience or in like in your situation here, maybe I won't have to travel so much. Maybe I can really leverage all the people that are for forcibly moved into remote work right now, you know, and, uh, and be able to leverage that for, for post COVID, you know, whatever that world looks like and, and however long it, it takes to peter out, but you're right. Uh, it's, that's a whole nother conversation almost we could get into about people hesitant and by people, I mean, organizations, companies that didn't really want to get into the digitization and, uh, get into remote work, but now, um, they kind of have to do it. So 
it, it's good to see that. I think that coincides with a lot of the other things that we've talked about. So I'd love to pivot again. That was really interesting. And I, I did note how you said the fun in struggle. And that's one of the cool things about this podcast is talking to people and asking some of the things that are on my mind and some of the questions I like asking and hearing like mm-hmm. a completely different answer that I've, I've never heard somebody say, I try to see the fun in every struggle and I don't really have the word struggle in my vocabulary. And it's just something that I try to like boop, pick out and like apply to my own life. And then next time I'm quote unquote struggling or whatever it is, or I'm stressed out, I kind of just pull this back out and just go, Hey, you know, let's approach this with a new mindset. And that's why I love these conversations. They, they help you do that. So in moving forward with the the pivot that I wanted to do within the conversation, I, I'd love to know about, um, it, are you the type of person that sets goals for yourself in your business? I do, but I probably set goals in a really different way than other people. I'd so love to hear I it. joke a lot yeah. about, I worry about the H's. Like people talk about money, they're worrying about the K's or the M's or depending on the size of their business, the B's. I worry about the H's, the people Mm. helped. Mm. So how many people Mm. have I impacted today, this week, this month? And I encourage any company that I work with to do the same thing. Because if you focus on that, every day is a win, even with a sales organization. Instead of how many activities did you do? How Mm. many polls? How many meetings? No. How many people did you help? Mm. Because if that's what you focus on from a goal perspective, the things that come to you are literally, it flabbergasts you. The opportunities, the success, the accolades, it's amazing because it's not your focus. Your focus is impact and helping, yet you get more of it than when you used to focus on it, and me included, Mm -hmm. because it used Mm -hmm. to be, you know, how do I get this certain role? How do I hit this certain number? How do I have this certain thing? And when I really streamlined my focus to impacting other people, I just shot past all of those smaller, more sure. selfishly focused goals. Sure. So, so it sounds like they used to be specific. They used to have numbers on them. Are they are they more general now, or are there still numbers attached to it? Like, I want to help numbers, ten people. But they're they're the numbers of people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that that's really cool because that's that's one thing. I ask questions that I'm living in my own life right now. Like I'm currently defining what my own life roadmap is and, and putting those numbers in there and trying to make them specific. You know, I've, uh, people have heard the smart goals and I can't remember the acronym off the top of my head, but things like that are things that I'm trying to implement in my life. So I'm trying to like probe into my guests a little bit and, and see how they do that because, you know, I want to learn that as well. And I love that, you know, it's people talk about the K's and the M's. But uh, you talk about the H's and I I love that you're able, it really just goes back to providing value. And I love that you pulled it back to when you provide value to other people, you're inevitably providing value for yourself because the best way to learn is to teach. And I can confirm that is one of my favorite ways to learn. So I'd love to talk to, we just talked about goals and then we ended up, uh, the best way to learn is to teach. And I want to talk about education a little bit more. And uh, do you have... This is a podcast, clearly. I'm not sure if we checked, but do you have favorite ways to learn? Are they podcasts? Are they reading? Are they just having conversations with other people? Or what are some of the ways that you maybe enjoy learning or you find best ways to learn? Anything Mm -hmm. like that or the best way for you to stay current in your field or what you do? Sure. So I love to read, but what's interesting is I love to learn from other people and I love to learn from the people that you don't expect to learn Mm -hmm. from. So for example, you talked about having a daughter. I would learn a lot from a child easily watch the way they do things. For example, how a kid handles failure. You see when your daughter was learning to walk, did she ever like beat up on herself and go, man, I fell down four times today. Why isn't this not happening for me? (laughs) No, she had fun, right? She was excited every time she got up, even if she fell down, she was enjoying that journey of learning, which so many of us, when we do the goal setting that you were talking about earlier, we're so focused on that goal, we forget mm. to enjoy how fun it is to get there. And, yeah. you know, they say life's a journey, not a destination. And that seems cliche. But mm. the thing is, is think back to your daughter and think back to the way she enjoyed every moment of every step. Yeah. Today, I made five steps. And yeah. this day, I just broke out into a run. So I like to pick up and learn things, especially regarding mindset and better ways to enjoy life from those unlikely sources. Mm. And that's so good because you want people to challenge you too, right? Because it's either A, if you have that growth mindset, it's either gonna Mm -hmm. 
well, it's going to challenge you, but it's going to solidify what you already believe. But if you approach it with, hey, I could be wrong, but let's be civil about it. Then if you are wrong, I want to know that I'm wrong and I want to be able to have new information and be able to take it in as objectively as possible. And you're right. Learning from my kid has been absolutely amazing. And she doesn't do that. She doesn't sit there and grope and cry and all these things. She just gets after and she gets back up and scary but it, it's it's an incredible learning time so i've been on a cliche kick lately and i and i think uh, yeah. clichés have, are there for a reason and, and the journey is is just w- another thing you, you just i don't know it's like you're in my head or something because it's been something that i've been thinking again about lately is i've essentially redefined my version of success and all all, all these things are things that i ask for a reason and i i've kind of articulated why that is but with the goal setting too i, I am very goal oriented but i solely defined my success off of me obtaining those goals and you're right because I did get wrapped up and that is the only way for me to identify that I have achieved success but now Mm -hmm. I still have a level of that like you have your h's right what's my h number so I've redefined it into that is my version of success is is the journey and 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 am I learning every day am am I doing better than I did yesterday and have I helped more people so that's 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 truly incredible is there something again that you're currently working on that you're trying to take your mindset to the next level of progression and I feel like I wrote down something here that I had seen you post and I want to ah here it is you recently is on Instagram and you post it what's the number one thing you do to keep yourself in the best mindset so can you share the answer here and tell us your why Sure. So the thing that I do is first thing in the morning and I always focus on like literally as I wake up in the first moments that I'm awake before phones, before I roll over, Mm. before any of those things, what do I really appreciate about this moment? What is really making me happy right now? And I really believe that there's momentum to our thoughts. So me focusing on that first thing, if it's for 30 seconds or a minute, it shapes my day. And I joke all the time. I'm like, almost daily, it involves, you know, the the way the sheets feel, because oh. that's one of the first things that I notice. I'm gonna t- and I'm gonna it can be that. the simplest things, you know, the, the dog beside me who has been with me for 12 years, who I adore, what I'm excited about that day, who I'm going to help what I'm going to do creatively. But every single day, that's the first thing I do when I Mm. wake up. The way that other people go brush their teeth, I do that. Brush my teeth too, after. (laughs) But that shapes my day. And if at any point, because everyone, I don't care how great you have of a mindset, things knock you off. I I told Mm. you earlier, dealing with the cable company and the internet with my move, I was like, man. So when those things knock me off, that's how I bring myself back. I remember what I was thinking about in the morning. How has that changed? What are the things I'm really happy and excited about right now? And I literally just say either I appreciate or I'm so happy because, Mm -hmm. and just keep listing things. The way that impacts my mindset I never would have been able to project or guess before I started doing it regularly. And I can't imagine living without it. Wow. That's so cool. So that's, that's admittedly the second thing that, that I've heard new in in all of these episodes. And you are, gosh, it's gotta be like the 160th person on here. And I've been really redefining my, my morning routine. I get out of Mm -hmm. bed. I, right on my gratitude whiteboard. I have okay. either a, a gym session or a running session. Then I meditate and then I read one page out of my daily stoicism book. And now I have something that I can do number one, because again, admittedly, I was getting out of bed. Actually, <laughs> I'll digress for one moment. I Before I was getting out of bed, I was looking at my phone to help me wake up because I don't snooze, but I would yeah. look at my phone and I, I love that even before you do anything, you're literally like feeling the sheets or, or, or the dog or, or, or whomever it is or, or whatever, the pillow and how comfy it is. But just really, mm-hmm. I think just stopping and it's like living in the now. It's like some Eckhart Tolle stuff, like just really appreciating the moment. And I mm-hmm. love that. And I'm going to try it. Um, I, so thank you for sharing that again. Uh, that's, that's, that's the second of two I'm things now. Add something yeah, yeah. That? phone across the room. Don't let the outside world dictate the first things you think about in the morning. Mm, 
Okay. And the phone is our link to the outside world for the most part, right? And if you can just take yeah. those first few minutes to really, in a conscious way, decide how your mood's going to be, mm-hmm. it it's such a big difference. I literally put my phone in another room now because of that, because I need to do this yeah. process, then get up, then go get it. Okay, that's awesome. And I love that you said that. I, I used to put it on the other side of the room, but um, so do you use do you use something else to wake up with? If we could like st- strategize this. No. Okay. No, but well, to be to be honest with you, I wake up pretty naturally. Oh, good for you. Good for you. I can I can have it, and I can go get it up and turn it off. Uh, but then I'm still having those thoughts. I'm okay. Not, I don't pick it up. Okay. I don't. Mm-mm. Yeah. No. <laughs> and and the reason I ask is is it's for myself too, but. I always try to impart this knowledge. Like if, if you you are listening to this podcast right now, so as you're listening to this podcast right now, I don't always want you to just listen to it. It's, it's really interesting and I enjoy it, but I really want you to take the things that are talked about in the episode and be able to apply them in your life. Like th- that is the goal of this. So I ask these questions and I share my own morning routine with not just you, but the people listening. And this is something I can add to and solidify. And quite frankly, I, I have felt the best I've ever felt because of those things. And because I consistently do them and I build up this, this, this momentum that just really just helps all of the things that we talked about today, subscribing to the growth mindset, bettering myself, helping other people. And it just sets the tone for the rest of the day. And I think that's one of the things, oh yeah, you said it shapes your day. So I love that. And that's a phenomenal thing to end on, like an actionable item that we can all try tomorrow morning. And then even if you want to try some of the things that I've done in the morning and what I love about this and what I say about this, um, and I'll finish with, you said you don't expect to learn or you love learning from people that you don't expect to learn from. So I think that coincides with you're not going to agree with everything that I said or that April said, and that's great. I encourage that, but take some of the things of that we said a little here, a little there and apply it to your own version of your morning and crush your morning. But if you want to be that person, then, then take that and make actionable steps forward to be able to implement that into your daily life. So April, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate it. But before we get out of here, can you please share with all of us how can we can contact you, whether it be uh, Instagram, websites, anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. So April Sprint, I am the only one in the U.S. And you can follow yeah. me on Instagram, LinkedIn. I post a lot of content. You can also check out my website. I have tons of free stuff that helps lots of folks. And I have a YouTube channel as well, which is Driven Outcome. Okay. Well, as always, you all will be able to find that and more. Lots of free stuff, YouTube, websites, all of the things you'll be able to find below. All right, April, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. I love learning new things. These are, they're, I mean, everything was good for sure, but I learned two new things that I can actually apply to my life. And I challenged you, if you're listening to this, to be able to apply them into your life as well. Try them out. If you don't like them, you don't like them, but give them a chance and uh, see how it can change your life for the better. So April, thank you again. Have a great rest of your day. Awesome. Thank you.